immigrated in 1938 or earlier? Earlier, in the, in the, in the, early, in the early 1930s. Uh -huh. And he went to South Africa because Shulka was there. Yeah. And Shulka told him to come. Because mm -hmm. uh, living in Poland was hard. Yeah. But I so, think that when Faro came to South Africa, he came as a bit of a celebrity actor. Mm -hmm. Already, he because he had quite a status as as a as a Yiddish actor in in society, and yeah. he was quite known and he was quite revered as that. Mm -hmm. This is my memory of the stories. Okay, nice one. Uh, Yiddish theatre was very strong because there were all these Lithuanian uh, Jews. Active, mm -hmm. active theatre. Very much so. With, and, and our home was a home at which many of the Sarah Sylvia and the writers they used to um, come. Our, our home was a home in which a lot of entertaining Ken, of Ken. prominent Ken. people Ken. in the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the Ken. Jewish and cultural side of Jewish society yeah. more than the financially affluent society but the cultural aspect of Jewish life even people like Irma Stern and Lippi Lipschitz who were famous sculptors and painters in, mm -hmm. in, in South Africa were people that we, we would entertain in our home mm -hmm. and it was a home in which a lot of culture was prevalent. Yeah, yeah. left South Africa, our parents got divorced mm -hmm. and Fabo came to live in Israel in uh, 1966 mm -hmm. and so I don't think that had anything to do with the story about Alto but he was thinking about writing the Mishpocha book already many years before mm -hmm. but it's only when he was in Israel that he sat down and did it. Mm -hmm. um, in South Africa Really, he was very involved in uh, Alto's the story carrying on, and um, every every yotza there would be an evening, and I remember fo photographs of Fabo standing delivering a speech with a big notice at the back, uh, bunt. Uh, it was sort of it featured Fabo. Uh, his friends in Israel, mm -hmm. first of all, uh, Sutzkabawa and uh, all the big Yiddish poets, were, they were like a group, they used to meet very, very often and he was very involved in that and he had friends who came to Poland very often and father didn't want to come. It took him a very long time, I think he only started coming in the 1980s, that uh, he spoke about it. I think he had an emotional thing, he didn't know how he would react yeah. coming back to Poland. And he delayed it for a long time, and in the end he decided, he said, one year, talk, I'm going to go. Didn't I Fabo win a Peretz Prize for literature? He won prize. Manga, Manga, the Manga Prize. Manga, it's a Manga. Yeah, 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 Manga. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do you know yeah. that Manga wrote a Yiddish poem? Mm -hmm. Manga was with Alto in London. Yeah. They met. Uh -huh. And uh, Manga, when Fabo and uh, Penina, our mother, were in London in 19, 1950, Manga took them to the crematorium mm -hmm. where Alto's ashes were being yes. kept yes. before they were sent to New York. Yeah. And now uh, Alto's sons are trying to get the ashes sent back to Poland. And uh, Manga wrote a poem, a Yiddish poem, about Alto's death mm -hmm. very soon after he committed suicide. It's in the book. Farrell and Manga were very close friends Manga uh, got sick, he was in a hospice in Gadera mm -hmm. and one of the last photographs is of when he was still alive is of Fabo visiting Manga where he is, Manga City is like a stick in a white mm -hmm. sort of robe and Fabo standing next to him yeah. 
and uh, every year in Israel there's the Mungo Prize and one year five I won it. So in the 1970s in Israel they made a documentary series called Amuda Esh. Mm -hmm. um, Pillar of Fire is from the story of Lot. Uh, now when the Jews were going through the desert after Egypt and there was a pillar of fire yeah. so that they could see their way. That's what the series was called. And it was about the birth of the State of Israel. And I don't remember, I think there were about 10 or 12 um, different programs about it. Once a week they used to give a, another episode. And it was in chronological order, so we always knew what period was going to be next. Yeah. And when it was going to be the, the period about Beto Barsha, mm -hmm. a father came to us and he spent the night with us. Mm -hmm. And we were all sitting around the television waiting, garnished. They didn't mention a word. And really, father, I was scared he was going to get a heart attack. He was so, he was more sad than cross. I was cross. I was cross for him. Yeah. Because of what, uh, uh, because of his reaction, yeah. And I didn't tell him that I was going to do it. But the next, the next day, I phoned the Israeli television, mm -hmm. and I said, what, "What's the matter with you? Yeah. How can you do that?" And the producer said, "Igal Lossin." He said, um, on the editing board, that they had many discussions about Zigaboy. And they decided not to mention him because he was a Buddhist. And really, uh, look, in Israel, especially in the 1950s, you weren't allowed to speak Yiddish. There wasn't Yiddish theater. Ben Gurion wanted a Jewish state, yeah. everybody to speak Hebrew, no other. And that sort of carried on a bit. And sort of being a Zionist was very important. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why they decided to leave to leave Shmuel out. Yeah. And uh, so he said that he was among the people that wanted to include the story, but he the majority said no. Mm -hmm. I have actually not so many years ago visited my family in Argentina. We visited them as young children. Our parents took us on a boat trip to Argentina to meet with um, Vega, whom he hadn't seen at that point for about 25 years. Yes. They cashed in an insurance policy and we went on a boat trip and met for the first time. They made connection after 25 years of not seeing each other at all. Okay, it so was it was Feiger uh, who immigrated? Feiger, yes, uh -huh. yes. And when she left, she was a young a woman and she now was already a grandmother with children and grandchildren and we met the entire family and spent a, a very, very special and memorable time together. Reuven was the youngest brother yeah. mm -hmm. and Reuven, after the war, he was living in Italy yeah. with his wife Tsipora mm -hmm. and they visited and then they moved to Israel mm -hmm. and after they were living in Israel, Arta, their eldest daughter, was born in Israel yeah. and they came to uh, South Africa, I don't remember, Arta must have been about young child, eight or nine. Mm -hmm. when they came and she's a younger, a year younger than I am and they had a son Ben Sion mm -hmm. as well and father tried to organize some kind of business for Reuben that he should be able to make a living so that in South Africa there was Shulka who came first then father and then Reuben okay mm -hmm. and Reuben remained in South Africa until uh, he got divorced and married Julia, yeah. a second wife, and then uh, I think after Julia died, he came back to live in Poland and he's buried here. Well, there was a Vrocha uh -huh. who was in Los Angeles who married Tema and they never had children. Mm -hmm. And there was a uh, Josel, yeah. Artur's son from his first wife, yes. Mania, uh, who came to visit us in Israel with his wife Adele 
who was also a Holocaust survivor. Mm -hmm. And um, they had two sons, Arthur and Paul, who I've never met. Okay. They live in California, but I've never met them, but Arthur has contact with them. Mm -hmm. And Benny, Arthur's brother, lives in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. So the Zigglebone Zigglebo name is carrying on because Fabel only had two daughters. How do you think Weishmuel chose your father to be the recipient of his farewell letter? Uh, they should have been relatively close to each other. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I suspect that it had to do with the fact that Fievel was the one who, the fact that Fievel made so much concerted effort mm -hmm. to keep his memory alive and his story alive is a very strong indication to me that there was a particularly close connection between the two of them. Mm -hmm. And I think also the fact that Fievel was so deeply um, involved in Yiddish. I don't think Fievel was a Zionist. Mm -hmm. I, th I don't know that he was a Buddhist. None of them were. None of them no. were particularly no. involved no, in Zionism. And I think that there was an identification that existed between Fievel and, and Arthur.